Hi everybody, Brian James here from Rhino3D.com and in this video I'll be talking about Multipipe, a new command in Rhino 7. So you can use Multipipe in the command line directly or you can use the Multipipe component in Grasshopper. I'll be talking about that second approach at the end of this video, but to start Multipipe can be spelled this way or you can grab the icon in the sub D tools and the first step will be to select curves to pipe. You can use lines as well. Press enter when done and you'll be asked to set the pipe radius. The next step will be to choose whether or not to cap the ends. If you don't, you'll just have open ends and they'll be flat. The last setting here is called strut divisions and zero for smooth curves like a circle or an S shape and one which is the default for straight lines. I actually prefer to use straight lines with multi-pipe whenever possible uh, because it will yield the simplest sub D surface. If we move up to the circles here I have fragments, I have these arcs, because I split the two circles against one another. You don't always have to do this, but I find that the intersection at these junctures ends up being smoother if I split the overlapping curves prior to running the command. This time for strut divisions, I'll use a value of zero since these are smooth curves. And again we get one sub D surface text and the certain fonts that you'll have access to on your computer are often going to be combinations of arcs, smooth curves, and straight lines. In those cases I tend to use a strut division value of zero. I'll use uh, 0.2 for the radius here and the caps I'll leave them on and for strut divisions I'll use zero since it's a collection of smooth and straight. I want to point out something about the control point structure of your lines or curves that you use. So you can see this polyline here only has control points at the ends and these two corners. I'll drag it off to the side and tap Alt to make a copy. And I'll turn on the control points for both of these polylines. I'm going to use the command insert control point on this one on the left and I'm going to add some control points in these four locations like that because I want to show you the difference when you use multipipe on these two sets of uh, control points and I'll set it back to one for strut divisions these are straight lines and you can see the change in shape that we got So if you don't get the shape that you'd like, know that you can add or remove control points prior to running multi-pipe and that will change the shape that you get. I like using multi-pipe as a starting point for a surface that is going to get additional work, additional editing. And this collection of straight lines for a bike frame is a great example of that. If I run multi-pipe here and set my radius to something a little bit more realistic and I'll turn off caps here so I just have a flat open end at the top. I can see that where the wheel would go in in the back here we don't have enough space so what I would end up doing here is sub object selecting these edges here like this and I'm using Rhino 7 for Windows you can hold down control and shift and left click to sub object select these edges. If you're on Mac you can hold down command and shift and left click. And so you see you can edit by changing the scale, just scaling those apart from one another. Like that to change the shape. You could control shift double click like this to get those edge loops and delete them if you wanted to remove that part of the transition. So using multi-pipe as a starting point I find can be really powerful for 
surfaces that are going to have organic intersections. Uh, if you use NURBS modeling, this would be um, accomplished using multiple radius fillets and also network surfaces in a lot of cases. Another quality that Multipipe has that I like is that in many cases it will deal with overlap. So here I have uh, several icosahedron triangles overlapping one another. And so they share these edges as you can see with the selection menu. So if I run Multipipe on this collection, and let's say 0.3 for the radius, and I'll leave the strut divisions at one here, it's going to take care of that overlap and we're going to end up with just a single sub D surface. I want to let you know how I made this uh, collection of curves because it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's these icons here that came from the Polyhedra plugin. Uh, you can get that plugin for free in Rhino uh, via the package manager command. The package manager command will let you install and update plugins and this one is called polyhedra and then you'll have one command called polyhedron to make all sorts of shapes and the output in this case was set to curves. You can also use multipipe as the starting point for something that will be symmetrical. So in the case of uh, some eyeglass frames here I can run multipipe. I'll cap the ends and I'll leave it at a strut division of one because these are straight lines. And then I can use the reflect command. I'll hold down shift to finish setting that plane and then click on the side that matters to me. So you don't have to do all the curves at the same time. You can simply use reflect after the fact. Now let's take a look at using multipipe in Grasshopper. So I have a selection here of lines that have been split against one another. So they're grouped for ease of use here, but each one of these is a separate section in a group. So if you're not familiar with Grasshopper, you can run the Grasshopper command in Rhino and the icon for it is in the standard toolbar, launch Grasshopper. So Grasshopper gives you an alternate way to work with geometry in Rhino and Multipipe is um, another option there. We'll start in Grasshopper with an empty curve component from the params tab. It's orange, which means it doesn't have any referenced geometry. I've got these groups of lines that are split against each other. I'll shift select both and then right click the curve component and choose set multiple curves. The multipipe component in Grasshopper is in the surface tab sub D section. And you can drag those curves directly into the curves input on it. The node size input is the radius value. If we go into params input, you can find a number slider component and by default it will go between 0 and 1. If you drag that value into the node size input of multipipe, you can then scrub the slider to change the value. The multipipe component also has a caps option at the end and if I mouse over it you can see there's three values 0, 1, or 2 for none, round, or flat. You can also right click it instead of feeding in one of those three numbers and you can just choose round. The real power of multipipe comes when you want to control the radius at the intersections differently throughout the multipipe. And we can do that by referencing a point. So I'll get an empty point component from the params tab. I'll right click choose set one point and I'll pick this point that I have already made in Rhino. Then in the vector section I'll grab the distance component from the point group 
And I want to measure between that point that I just referenced to all of the points, the endpoints of my line segments. So to get all of those endpoints, I'll go into the Curve tab, Analysis section, and grab a Control Points component. My curves go into the curve input. And if you mouse over the output of points, you can see uh, how many points you're actually getting from that analysis. I'll drag all those points into the point A input. And these distance values can be fed into the node size in place of this one number. So we're going to have 288 different values. Before we do that, I want to take this collection of points and I want to flatten them down. So if you right click the points output, you can choose flatten. And then I can take the distance values, throw those into node size, and all the points, throw those into size points. The values are really big right now. So one way that you can make big values smaller is to multiply them by a small number, something less than one. So I'll choose multiplication component from the maths tab and I'll multiply these values from our distance component against a small number. I'll use that number slider again and then those results can go into the node size. So the smaller this number goes, the less we have uh, too large of a radius value. And it's all hooked up to that reference point. So as you drag around this reference point, the distance values update because we're measuring from this point to all the control points, the endpoints of all of our line segments, and those values are changing. Now it gets even more interesting if you want to take these values and further tweak them with the graph mapper component. So if we go into the params tab, input and grab the graph mapper component, you can right click this and choose the graph type. So there's a lot of options here, a lot of creative possibilities, and I'll just choose uh, Gaussian. I'll take all of the values from our multiplication component and drag them through the graph mapper and then move that output, all those tweaked values, to replace the node size. Now as you change the value of our multiplication component, you can then further adjust it using the graph mapper. So you can change it like this. This can be really handy if you don't want the radius values to get too small in a certain spot but you do want the gradation of those values. Now if you want the output, so you want this actual sub D to be in Rhino, then you right click the multi-pipe component and choose bake and say OK. And now this sub D is not connected at all to the grasshopper file. So you can make multiple iterations of a design really quickly this way. I'll bake out another one. And that, I think, is the real power of using multipipe within Grasshopper versus the command line uh, version. But both allow you to create uh, quick sub-Ds with complex intersections um, at junctures of lines and curves. And that's multipipe in Rhino 7. Thanks for watching.